What is up guys, this is Steve for Android at Night and today I'm going to be showing you some of my favourite apps for 2017. So sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy. And first on this list is my favourite launcher which is going to be Nova Launcher. There are loads of other alternatives out there and I know I always talk about Nova Launcher but it's because for me it has all the features you could possibly need, it's incredibly customizable, and all the animations are incredibly fluid. Some of my favourite features are the scrolling dock at the bottom and the quick settings which allows you to long press on an icon in order to access some quick settings for that specific app. You can also have it set so you can have a folder on your home screen which if you tap will launch the first app in that folder and if you swipe on it it will launch the entire folder. It's a really great launcher and it's a really easy way to customise your device to make it look however you want and keep as much functionality as possible. Snap Swipe Draw fixes one of my biggest bugbears with Android, which is the fact that you can't put widgets in your notification panel. When this is enabled, you can pull down from the top right hand corner of your notification bar regardless of what app you're in and you'll be able to get a pane of customisable widgets. These work just like widgets on your home screen, they're fully scrollable, they're fully interactive and if a widget works on your home screen it will work in Snap Swipe Draw. The only thing I don't like about this app is the name, it doesn't sound great but the functionality is absolutely on point. Next on this list is my favourite weather app for Android which is called Dark Sky. One of the reasons this is the best is it has a widget that will just tell you whether it's going to rain in the next hour. It's incredibly accurate and it beats out on all the other weather apps that I've tested. The rest of the app is also really pretty and there's a 3D meteorological map which will show you how the weather system is moving over your part of the world. You can also set up weather alerts and you can save different locations so you can see the weather across the world. Next up we have Google Photos which is probably the best app that Google have made for Android so far. This can automatically back up all of your photos to the cloud so they're always going to be there and you're not going to lose them. If you've got a Google Pixel you can also back everything up in full quality for free. The great thing about Photos is it's really easy to find stuff whether you're doing it by geolocation or whether you're just searching with a keyword like bike. This will show you all of your photos of bikes. It's also got a couple of nifty features built in like Google's scanned photos which allows you to take a photo of a physical photo and upload it to Google. It also has an option which will go through and automatically delete all the files on your phone that are automatically saved to the cloud and this is a really easy way of freeing up some extra space on your SD card or your internal storage. It has some really nifty automatic editing built in which will fix things like your white balance and your contrast and you can make animations, GIFs and collages as well. Following on on the photo theme we have Snapseed which is my favourite photo editing app currently for Android. There's a few reasons for this, firstly the interface just looks really really pleasing and it works on this really nice slide mechanism. So you slide your finger up and down to select what you want to change and then you can slide left and right to adjust the variable. You can also go back and selectively edit your changes to a photo so if you've applied a filter that you don't want you can just go backwards and get rid of that filter. And there's a whole host of different filters and effects that you can apply to your photos. One of my favourite is this lens blur effect which will allow you to take portrait shots and make them look more like a DSLR. It'll blur out the background and make the face in your photo really really pop. There's a whole host of editing apps out there and I'm going to be doing a video very shortly on some more of my favourite but if you're looking for one that is quick, easy to use then Snapseed is definitely worth a try. Next up is Spotify which is my music streaming service of choice. There are loads of different alternatives out there but the main reason that I use Spotify is because it works really well with Amazon's Alexa and as well as this it works seamlessly across multiple devices so if you're playing it on your laptop through some speakers you can still select songs and playlists using your phone. Another thing that I really like is all of the auto generated playlists are pretty much on point especially the one that pulls out your most played songs of the year or your most played songs of the last month. The interface is getting better and better with each update and the real clincher for me is that this only costs £5 a month if you're a student, it's £10 normally which is a little bit dear but if you go on a Spotify family plan you can have up to 5 members of a household using this for £15 a month and you can have 5 people using it, you have your own accounts, you can be playing them all at the same time, they don't interfere at all, it's as if you've got separate Spotify accounts, it just costs a lot less. I'd be interested to hear from you guys what your thoughts are on this, if you've got a different favourite streaming service let me know in the comments below and argue your case. Next up we have my current favourite Twitter client which is Fenix. The main reason for this is the material design interface which I think just looks gorgeous and simplistic and fits really well with the rest of Android. It's got all the features you'd need and expect from a Twitter client and it just does everything in a really visually pleasing way. 
It's got things like full gift support. It will tell you how many characters you've got left when you're composing a tweet. It's got a really nice widget and the notifications work really well. Next up we have SD Made, and this is by far the best tool to free up space on your SD card or your internal storage. When you install an app on your phone and then uninstall it, there's loads of crap files which stay around and take up space. SD Made will get rid of all of these for you, and it will also get rid of all the cached files that you no longer need. This doesn't sound like a huge amount, but if you run this every couple of weeks, you'll notice you can free up up to about 250 megabytes of space. So if you are running really low on space, this is definitely a tool to try out. There are loads of apps on the Play Store which claim to save you battery life, and most of them don't work for shit. Greenify, on the other hand, works rather well. If you're rooted, it's got even more functionality, but if you're unrooted, this will also save you battery life. What this does is hibernate specific apps and ones that you choose whenever your phone screen turns off. So if you've got something running in the background like Instagram, where you don't actually need the push notifications all the time, you can set it to automatically turn that off, and this will save you loads of battery life. Quite a lot of people seem confused by Greenify, so I'm going to leave some links in the description both to a really detailed guide and also a link which will show you exactly how this works. Next on this list is Solid Explorer, and this is by far my favourite file manager for Android, and it has been for quite a long time. Now this doesn't do anything particularly sexy, as it's a file manager, but it will do everything you need in terms of exporting stuff and extracting things. You can use it to mount external SD cards or USB sticks to your phone, and you can then drag and drop stuff across and vice versa. My favourite feature is this split screen mode, which will allow you to transfer stuff from one directory to another. It's just a really nicely featured file manager, it works really well and it just looks pretty. Next on this list is Pocket Casts, which is my favourite podcast manager for Android. Again, as with a lot of these applications, I really love it because the interface is really simple and it adheres to material of design. But there are some features that really set this apart from other podcast apps. One of my favourite features is the ability to skip forward or backwards by 30 seconds and 10 seconds, which is really useful for skipping past adverts and things like that. It's got another nice mode which will allow you to go to sleep listening to a podcast and it will either turn it automatically off when the podcast finishes or you can set it to go to sleep after say 20 or 30 minutes. Finally, it lets you play podcasts back at different speeds which is really useful if you're just listening to something to get the information and you want to be able to listen to a one and a half hour podcast in 45 minutes. There are loads of different keyboard apps on the Play Store, but my current favourite is Gboard by Google. And there are three reasons for this. Firstly, it's got everything you'd want in a keyboard in terms of autocorrect and swiping. So if you want to be able to swipe or type, Google Keyboard will accommodate both typing styles. It also has searchable emoticons and emojis, and in certain applications you can insert GIFs straight from the keyboard. The second thing that sets this apart, however, is Google have integrated Google Search into the keyboard. At any time, you can tap on the little Google icon and this will allow you to initiate a search without leaving the app within the keyboard itself. This is super powerful and I actually use it more than Google Assistant. It's not contextually aware yet, but I imagine that will come in future updates. But if you want to be able to Google search quickly, then Google Keyboard is really powerful. And the final thing that sets this apart is the ability to customise this with different themes as well as make your own custom backgrounds. If you've got an image that you want, you can set this as your keyboard's background and you can look at it all the time. So there you are guys, those are my favourite apps of 2017. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite apps are or if you've got any alternatives to anything that I've talked about today. I apologise that I haven't been uploading as frequently as usual, I've just started a new job in Manchester so that's been taking up most of my time. Um, I'm also looking to move there so that's all that extra stress um, and all those sort of little life things that are getting in the way. All that being said, I am hoping to keep bringing stuff out at least one video a week from now on. So hit me up on Twitter or something if I'm not holding to that promise and you can bug me and try and get me to upload more. But thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.